Welcome everyone to Enphoto Studio. I'm Eugene Negaviecki, and today I have incredible guests. All the way from the DC area, I'm here with Dory Howell and Rachel Boyer, founders of the fastest growing photography community, an in-person sales group, IPS Mastermind. Uh, their group on Facebook has gathered over 58,000 members from all over the world in just a few years, and it keeps on growing. Dory, Rachel, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Dory, Rachel, what else can you tell us about IPS Mastermind, about yourselves, before we get started? You want to start? Um, yeah, I'll start. IPS Mastermind is a Facebook community forum and also an educational community for professional photographers who learn who want to learn how to better their business, make more money, and provide better service for their clients. And we do that using a certain business model that has photographers actually selling products to their clients, and those products get stored by their clients and saved for generations and enjoyed for years to come. And a lot of photographers have struggled with that in the past, and so we have provided a platform where photographers can come and learn how to do that. Oh, mm -hmm. wonderful. So the motivation behind IPS was you felt there was something missing in the industry or uh, maybe Rachel, what, what in your opinion was the motivation behind starting IPS Mastermind? Yeah, so I had a rather dramatic conversion story in my own business. When I started my business years ago, I was just selling digital files. You know, I would do a session and give away a disc of digital images for, I mean, pennies, really. Uh, very, very inexpensive. And after a few years of just working so hard at that and not seeing any real return on my efforts, I realized that this isn't working. Um, I was also frustrated that my clients were going through all the effort of having these beautiful portraits made and then they weren't doing anything with them. They were just sitting there on a disc, not getting enjoyed, not even getting seen by their family. Mm -hmm. So I decided to kind of drastically change everything and switch to this in-person sales model, which just means I sit down with my clients in person to show them their images and help them decide how they want to display and enjoy those images in their home, whether it's prints, albums, um, wall art, or even you know digital files. I do sell those as well, but I'm helping them through that process. And my story was such a dramatic shift in my business. Mm -hmm. Suddenly I was highly profitable, whereas before I had been in the red year after year. Suddenly my clients were happier, my referral rate had mm -hmm. gone through the roof. And so I just I became a little bit of an evangelist for this method and I wanted to help other photographers find their way in IPS. And at that time there wasn't a ton of education on how to do sales, how to mm -hmm. how to order these products and help your clients. So it kind of just started organically. We did some local workshops in the DC area and mm -hmm. after one of those workshops, um, I decided to start a Facebook group with the 10 people or so that were at that workshop. And I said, let's just make a little community where we can keep talking about these things and support each other. Mm -hmm. And then those those 10 people started adding their friends and they started adding their friends. Um, Four years later, here we are at almost 60,000 <laughs> photographers. Yeah. Wow. So it's really taken off and uh, it's been very exciting to watch that. Well, that's fantastic and what a great story. And like you say, your success, you know, it shows that there was really a need for this. Something was missing yes. in, the, in the photography world and you two have brought it all together and it's such a great story. Now, on this topic of IPS Mastermind, can, can you just give us a little bit uh, of a more of an idea of who is behind IPS Mastermind, a quick glimpse of the people who, who make up IPS Mastermind? Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk? Well, um, IPS Mastermind as a business um, mm -hmm. is us as the two owners, and then mm -hmm. we have a team that supports us. But ideally, IPS Mastermind is our community and the people of photographers who've joined along with us to learn about um, this business model and also mm -hmm. to build their businesses and we have a great community of members that um, are helpful and answer questions and really really want to see other people succeed so as much as we are behind the scenes helping people along it really is our community that makes IPS Mastermind unique and special yeah, and the other thing I think that makes us unique is it's not just us teaching. It's right. not you're not getting things from one or two perspectives. We have um, brought together about thirty or forty different photographers who are all instructors on our platform. So they each bring a class 
or two that is on a topic that they do really, really well. So if they're passionate about marketing, they're bringing us great marketing content. Um, if they're maybe a senior portrait photographer, they can bring us a class on that topic. We actually leave the topic up to the instructors so that you're learning from a variety of different people, all teaching on what they do best. So that's another thing that I think makes yeah. it a really special community. There's a lot of different ways to run a successful business. And when we decided that we wanted to do something more than just a Facebook group, it really came down to the fact that we knew that we did some parts of our business really, really well, but also we wanted to learn. So it came out of a need for us wanting to learn more about how to better our business and who did we want to learn from? Well, we wanted to learn from photographers who were doing it day in and day out with their studios, not necessarily all the people that you see every day, but the people who are really just down in the trenches with us right. trying to um, make a better life for themselves. Mm -hmm. That's You know, and I really appreciate that, that mindset of you wanting to also learn. You know, I actually was educated as a teacher and mm -hmm. I would always tell my students, if you really want to learn something, try and teach it to someone else or try and surround <laughs> yeah. yourself with people who are trying to teach it. That's when you really know if you know it or not and it helps you to learn what you need to know. That's and great. and the, again, the, the all inclusivity you have in this group is kind of for professional photographers, but you have photography lessons and you also have marketing lessons and business lessons. So it's really kind of a one-stop shop, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. um, however, you know, IPS, uh, a lot of photographers can fear that it will be kind of a costly style to adopt, you know, not only in terms of money and financially, but also maybe in terms of time and effort, you know, putting that personal experience, it can take some time and some effort. Yes. Uh, do you think that that's true? Is it true that IPS is kind of an arduous method to, to adopt? I think that there's a lot of different ways that you can run a successful business. And IPS, IPS is one of those ways where you can adopt a very, very time intensive, expensive process, or you can do it on a more streamlined basis. And I think as you grow as a photographer and you grow as a business person, you find what flow works best for you. Mm -hmm. When I started IPS, I just heard about it and basically the catalyst for me was that um, I heard on an online forum somewhere that if I sat down with my clients and showed them their images in person versus sending them a gallery, I would make more money. And that was that was my trigger. I'm like, I wanna make more money for my family. I'm, I want my clients to be happy, but really ultimately it's about providing a better experience for my for my family, you know, we're all doing this and we all have our different whys. And so mm -hmm. I started with a mounted print and an eight by 10 canvas. And I went in with my laptop and I showed my images through Bridge, I think. And that was the first thing. And I did that several times. Mm -hmm. And then I added on and then mm -hmm. I added on and I mm -hmm. refined my process more and more as time went on. So to start, you can read through these big long workflows that are very seem can seem very costly and seem mm -hmm. very time intensive mm -hmm. but you can you can start on a really more streamlined basis until you really decide what style works best for you Okay. Yeah, we, we always tell people, you know, if you really want to, you can be doing in-person sales by the weekend. You know, mm -hmm. this doesn't have to be a six month or a 12 month process to get yourself ready. All you need to do is just say to your client, hey, I'd love to show you these images in person. Do you want to meet up at a coffee shop or can I come to your home? Mm -hmm. Maybe bring one or two samples that you might already even have. Mm -hmm. um, I took a picture. Of, I took pictures of my daughter. I had them in my house already. Yeah. So I'm like, <laughs> okay. Okay, here's a mounted print of my daughter and here's an 8 by 10 canvas of my daughter. <laughs> and away I went. Yeah, you really don't need to invest a whole lot up front, which is okay. kind of the beauty of it. It's about connection and it's mm -hmm. about that relationship with your client and a desire to serve them and help them. So if you have that, you're ready to go, you know? I'm hearing a lot of mentioning of things like a canvas or a sample. Is is it kind of a one-to-one -one relationship with IPS and having some kind of a print product? Or can could you meet with somebody and show them something on a computer screen? Uh, where does that kind of fit in? Like. Mm -hmm. Well, because we believe that um, you should be offering products to your clients, we believe that people buy what they see, and that usually is the case. So you want to take samples. So if you're offering a beautiful box and album set mm -hmm. with a USB, like what Enphoto offers, or you're showing canvases, it is good to show them so that they can see the quality and realize that what you're offering, they're not going to be able to get at their local store, mm -hmm. that it's something unique to your business, and it's beautiful heirloom quality, and it's just something a little bit different and a little bit special. So having samples is key, but you don't necessarily need them when you're starting out. 
Yeah, I think it definitely makes it easier to sell if you have that physical product to put in their hands. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't yet, if you don't have the budget for a full set of samples, we always just say, start with what you have. Right. And, you know, you can show images of your products and that kind of thing and mm -hmm. do the best you can until you can afford that sample yeah. set that you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Dory and Rachel, you both are still shooting and you're very prominent photographers. Uh, I'm curious to ask you, we're talking about print products and things like this. What kind of products really get you excited? What kind of, is there a specific thing like an album or a canvas that you are always like, yeah, I can't wait to do mm -hmm. this? Or does do you kind of run the gamut? Is there something specific that really gets you excited every time you have to design it or get it? Yeah. Uh, go ahead. Gosh, I, I, you know, I, I'm a little bit fickle and the fact that my mind changes all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so sometimes I really, really love beautiful album boxes and, and mm -hmm. then a couple months down I'm like oh I really want to sell some folio boxes with these great prints or sometimes it's just like you know what I really love these framed canvases right now and this is what I want to sell um so I, I kind of love all of it <laughs> and I want I just my ideal goal is to make sure that my clients are getting their images in the form where they're going to enjoy them the most okay. and the best mm -hmm. but for me personally I love big canvases that's kind of what my if you walk in my house mm -hmm. i have big canvases i just hung a 35 by 70 in my dining room wow. so and when you walk in the house there's another 40 by 60 so i'm a cool. big statement piece person wow. when you walk yeah. into my home um but other people love you know the the smaller what are those gallery walls yeah gallery walls and some people don't have that kind of wall space, so right. they might be best served with a, an album or a folio box. Okay. Right, and and that's where I am. A lot of my clients live in D.C., and they live in these little tiny brownstones or little apartments mm -hmm. where they truly just don't have wall space. Right. There's literally no walls to hang things on. And so for them, kind of by necessity, um, I steer them towards albums. And so most of my clients end up with an album, um, maybe a few other you know prints or right. other products, but an you know, albums are always a surefire bestseller for me. Yeah, her clients end up with albums and my clients end up with a big canvas. Yeah. It's just, it's just, and, that but works. that's a direct correlation of, of what, of showing samples. It's yeah. because when they walk into my studio, that's what they see because that's what I enjoy. And right. when you walk into Rachel's studio, you see lots of albums and books mm -hmm. and things displayed on her tables. Mm -hmm. That's actually uh, something I would like to ask you too. Because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm writing and things and trying to help photographers as well. I love my platform because I like to try and help photographers. As I said, I, I was educated as a teacher and I, I really feel that in my, in my soul. Uh, so I'm going back and forth when I'm saying to photographers, you know, try and have some diversity in your studio. But, you know, also show what you love. Like, where do you kind of put that, where's that middle ground between having what you love but also having some diversity? Because not, you know, you might get a client who might be different than what you like and it might be profitable for you to, to sell them what they would like. So what is your take sure. on something like that? You know, after many years of doing this and, and kind of coaching other photographers and seeing how they do it, I've come to the point of, you know, simplicity is best. Yeah. So when you're deciding what your product line is going to be, one of the worst mistakes you can make, I think, is offering too many things, too okay. many options. You know, you have 14 different products and each of those has 30 different options and your client gets overwhelmed. <laughs> okay. And when they're overwhelmed, they don't they buy. Don't buy. Right. Um, so keeping things as simple as possible. You know, I mentioned okay. albums. Mm -hmm. I only offer one type of album in two sizes and then they can choose the cover option that they like they can just choose the color of the cover that's okay. it and so i'm not showing them a full spread of you know 20 different album styles that would be overwhelming right okay yeah keeping things simple is key and i think also the way that you get to know your clients a little bit better and find out exactly what their needs and their interests are mm -hmm. is also really key in the ips process because if i know someone lives in a smaller um, brownstone or condo or something in the in the DC area or that type of thing I probably won't gear them towards large large wall art I will probably talk more a little bit about albums and folio boxes but I've gone through the process before we've even had the session to get to know them a little bit better and find out what they're looking for right. and um, sometimes what they're looking for isn't exactly what they what they ask for isn't exactly what they want so mm -hmm. sometimes clients have a hard time of making that connection. Mm -hmm. So it's my job through the consultation process and just in getting to know them a little bit better mm -hmm. to find out what things they might be interested in so that I can show those to them. 
Okay. So there's a, see, there you go again. There's a way you can kind of take a lemon and turn it into lemonade by making that consultation, again, part of the IPS process. Okay, well, let's find yep. out what you would like. You know, let's not assume, let's not make something that you're not going to like. So let's meet and let's talk. And For sure, because people don't even always know what they want. You yeah. know, if you were to ask um, a prospect, you know, well, what kind of products are you interested in? They, they have no idea right. mm-hmm. until they've seen your samples or talked to you about their needs that they don't even know what they right. want. Mm-hmm. And the default is digital files because mm-hmm. that's what people know and that's what people hear. But so the idea is to, even if you offer those, which is great, you have something else to build onto that mm-hmm. so that you can show them all those different options. Okay. And this actually gets me, I'm going to come back here for a second. Going back to the uh, general philosophy and methodology of IPS, uh, some photographers feel that there maybe just isn't a market for IPS. Maybe specifically in their location, it's a small market or something like this. Or even in general, because of this abundance of shoot and burn digital photographers, where their clients, the clients just want the cheapest possible professional photos that they can get. How would you persuade a photographer uh, who might be interested in the IPS? method but is concerned that it just won't work for them i can say categorically that ips works everywhere and i'm just going to put that out there because if you walk into any establishment really any business on the street they're doing ips if i walk into macy's and i need a little bit of help finding my size that Mm -hmm. salesperson is doing IPS with me. They're selling in person, they're helping me out. And if I walk into Subway to get uh, a sandwich, that's IPS. (laughs) It really just is a method of helping your client in person. It doesn't have to mean that you are outrageously expensive, Mm -hmm. that you're doing some crazy model that has never been done in the history of mankind. It really is a very common (laughs) sales process. Well, it was around before shoot and burn. This this was how photography was sold, I think the big thing that people think about as being expensive Mm -hmm. or IPS being expensive is the fact that we, the number one thing we want is we want people to have businesses that can help them and Mm -hmm. and maintain their lifestyle and help their families. Mm -hmm. So you can only do that if you run a profitable, sustainable business. Mm -hmm. You have to have money coming in. Mm -hmm. And so many people and photographers, especially if they're newer to the, maybe the shoot and burn model or that type of thing, they haven't run their numbers and they haven't Mm -hmm. really seen how much of this investment they've made in their business and how much they need to recoup on a session by session basis. Mm -hmm. And that's where we get that the reputation of being expensive. You can run your numbers however you want. You just need to make sure that if you're going to be in business that you're making a profit. Mm -hmm. And some people just don't realize how expensive running a photography business is. Mm -hmm. Is there a place for digital products within the IPS uh, method? Absolutely. (laughs) Hey. <laughs> jinx. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah jinx, jinx. Right. Um, I sell digital files to almost all my clients. Okay. People love digitals. And so when they contact me and that's what they ask for because that's what they're familiar with, mm-hmm. I absolutely say, yes, you can buy your digital files. But then I also believe that my digital files, because they are my digital negatives to my art, mm-hmm. are the most expensive thing that I offer. Okay. I, I'm not offering them at $50 a piece. They come with a price tag because I'm giving them the option to go and then reproduce that art for forever mm-hmm. anywhere that they want. Right. So it's just one of those things where digital files are great. You just need to make sure that you see the value, you recognize the value, and then you price that accordingly. Okay. Uh, and Rachel, you have anything to add about how digital products fit into the IPS you know, methodology? Yeah. IPS, again, is really just about selling in person. It doesn't really have to do with what you choose to sell. Mm -hmm. You can sell digitals, you can sell prints, albums, you can sell some or all or none of the above, and it really just is that in-person piece that is the key. Mm -hmm. Um, I offer digital images as well, and the way that I do it is um, I kind of have them priced on a sliding scale. So the more that my client chooses to purchase in, you know, tangible artwork, the lower that scale is going to go on the digital files. Mm -hmm. So that way it serves as a bit of an incentive. If they really do want those files, they kind of have to purchase a certain amount of wall art first or albums first, Mm -hmm. and then those files uh, drop in price. So that's worked really well for me to help me hit my target, and it makes my clients happy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see uh, often that clients will kind of convert? You know, you might get a client who's like, oh, I want the digital, I want the digital, and then... You know, five visits later, like, no, just give me the canvas or something like yes. that. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah. And all the time. I think people see that as a red flag when they get mm-hmm. an inquiry that says, I'm interested in a session. How much are the digital files? 
your IPS photographer is going to think, oh no, wrong client, run right, away, right, run away. Not my client. Not, not my client. client. But no. that's not a red flag at all. Yeah. The clients just simply don't know what options exist other than digital files. They've probably mm -hmm. never been exposed mm -hmm. to a really beautiful canvas or a, a folio box and that type of thing. And once you show them those options, a lot of times they change their minds and they want those yeah. things. It's fun to watch that process happen too because when they come into the studio and all they know is digital files and that's all they want and then you see these, they come in and they see the beautiful albums and boxes and everything displayed and you just give it a little bit of time and you watch them go up and they start to look through things mm -hmm. and they start asking questions about things and it's mm -hmm. a really interesting transition to watch your client go through and it's super fun to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. How much uh, does self-confidence relate to success as a professional mm -hmm. photographer? That's a, That's, great a great <laughs> That's a great question. That's a great question. Yeah, it's a very insightful question because I think self-confidence and confidence in, in your artwork and in what you're doing for your client has a bigger role than almost anything else in determining your success. Yeah, you yeah. It's it's interesting to watch in our community when people come in and they're like, I can't see how I can sell a five by seven for more than two dollars because it's mm -hmm. only costing me sixty nine cents to make. And then as we go through and we have these conversations and we educate them to see, so much more goes into that artwork than just the paper. The paper. It's not about mm -hmm. the paper. It's mm -hmm. about everything that it that you needed to do to create the artwork that's printed on the paper it's just a really interesting transition to go through but you have to you do have to have some self-confidence mm -hmm. to um to be successful in sales that doesn't mean you have to be arrogant mm -hmm. it right. just means you need to believe that what mm -hmm. you sell has value mm -hmm. and that's what we're that's what we say all the time in our group is that what you are providing your clients especially i'm a newborn and family photographer mm -hmm. rachel does weddings and families and okay. I'm preserving people's very precious family memories and mm -hmm. that has value and once you start to make those connections, um, once in a lifetime opportunities, those types of things, it's fun to watch the light bulb go off in photographers minds and you get to see that what we're providing really, really is important and valuable. Mm -hmm. Do you see that clients often will come to you or professional photographers and almost automatically look to them as the uh, reference of kind of, uh, you know, the professional reference, I'm at a loss for words, but uh, in, mm -hmm. my, in my mind, some, some people might have it backwards where they worry, but at the same time, the clients are coming to them for their advice and their expertise. Do you see it that right. way, that often the client yeah. is looking for you to, make, to help them with some decisions and things like this? Yeah, they really do see us as the expert, and they rely on us uh, for our input and help and guidance in these questions at the ordering appointment. So a lot of times my client will say, I love this image. I don't know what I want to do with it. What do you think would look best? And then they just stare at me. And I have to come up with a recommendation of how to display that image in the way that's going right. to serve them best. And obviously I can do that well if I've taken the time to get to know them and their needs, learn about their home decor, how they plan on enjoying the images. But a lot of times, whatever I recommend, they say, OK, let's do, yeah, let's that, do that. Good. Well, you're, they're coming to us as the experts. Yeah. In this, mm -hmm. so um, I was talking with. We were talking with another photographer a few weeks ago, and they're like, "Yeah, my clients come to me because I'm the expert. They need to do what I say <laughs> because because <laughs> I know how this should be displayed. I know how my artwork should be handled, mm -hmm. and um, it's very interesting. A lot of times in a in an IPS appointment, I'll see a client just kind of linger on an image. And you can tell, you can see the wheels spinning in their head, like, what will I do with this? What will I do with this? And I'll let them sit for a minute. And then finally I'll say, I said, would you like my opinion on what you should do with this with this image? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's asking them, I'm not forcing them, mm -hmm. my opinion on them, I'm asking permission to share this. And almost all the time, mm -hmm. Almost all the time, they're like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but, you know, you have to develop your style and what works okay. best for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to come back to kind of the business side of things for a second here. Now, IPS is, is certainly one of, if not the best method to achieve consistent and happy clients. Uh, but in terms of marketing a photography business, uh, how can a professional photographer effectively uh, get their name out? Is it just a matter of word of mouth or should they create kind of a formal marketing campaign? Uh, what would you advise uh, somebody to do who's struggling with that side 
of the spectrum? Yes. The answer to those two questions, <laughs> word of mouth or formal marketing campaign, is yes. Right. <laughs> you should have you should have both of those things, okay. if not more. Marketing is something that um, is really just a big giant beast, and you either you know you either know how to wrangle it or you don't. Yeah. And a lot of us don't know how to wrangle it. There's full university programs on marketing. Okay. Um, it's it's. A, a common saying that you should have seven lines or seven channels of marketing going out at all times and for most businesses you should market up to two hours a day to really create yeah mm -hmm. two hours a day who has Whoa. two hours a day right but it takes a lot of time yeah. to get the word out so yes mm -hmm. you should do word of mouth yes you should do a formal marketing campaign mm -hmm. yes you should do social media yes you should do um, networking, networking events, events chamber of commerce, partnerships, mm -hmm. all of those things mm -hmm. to really get the word out to as many people as possible. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a big job. Yeah, people yeah. really under, underestimate how much marketing they are going to need to do when they mm -hmm. start a business. And they mm -hmm. think, oh, I'll just start posting my pictures on Facebook. People mm -hmm. will see how great my images are and they'll all flock to me. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just not how it works. <laughs> These days, you know, right, social right? media it's, is not enough. Mm -hmm. um, for your marketing campaign to or marketing efforts to be successful, we do say two to three hours a day. Mm -hmm. We say you need to be consistent at that. You need to have a plan where you're reaching seven or eight or ten different channels every single day, mm -hmm. rather than just relying putting all your eggs in one basket. Okay. And I, I like to tell my you know mentoring clients when I'm working with them, you need to start thinking of yourself as a as a marketer. That's yeah, your full time right, right. primary job right now. Mm -hmm. And eventually, when you start seeing results, you can you know tweak things, become a little bit more efficient. But at first. And you got to go full bore and you got to market like yeah. you mean it. Mm -hmm. And the great thing is, is once you really start, once things really start picking up from those efforts, is marketing is something you can outsource to someone else. Mm -hmm. okay. It's not something that you as the artist needs to do. Right. So maybe you're doing it at the beginning, but if you do it well and you do it consistently, it really is a short term position as a photographer because mm -hmm. then you can hand it off to someone else to take the ball for you. Okay. Now, for a photographer who might be struggling with the marketing end, uh, they can find information on IPS. Uh, to, to help them with that. Well, what are some things that uh, a photographer has available to them if they were to get involved with IPS Mastermind? Yeah, marketing is one of our biggest um, areas of education because it's the thing that we hear consistently that people want the most help with. Mm -hmm. So we've really made a concerted effort to provide a lot of great resources on marketing. I think we have something like eight or ten different marketing classes that you can yes. take, and they all focus on a slightly different, you know, area of marketing. So there's one that's called uh, Marketing Blitz: uh, How to Grow Big Without Busting Your Budget. So that's really <laughs> about getting your name out there in as many ways as possible without spending gobs and gobs of money on it. Right. There's another one, um, deep marketing, and that one goes into relationship marketing. You know, how do you form meaningful connections with people in your community that over time are going to lead to those great client interactions? Right, and then we have um, defining and reaching your ideal client. Mm -hmm. So maybe you don't know, okay, well, I, mm -hmm. I need to get the word out there, but who do I get it out to? Right. Well, you need to learn that first, so you can learn that in that class. Mm -hmm. So we we've, we've really covered marketing very well and we have lots more classes coming because it's just a topic that people are always interested in. Mm -hmm. Okay and then they would just go on ipsmastermind.net and That's sign right. up and yeah. sign up with their email and they'd have full access uh, or access That's right. to these, these courses. Yeah, we have two different levels of membership on there. So the essential series is just a, a series of 12 classes that we recommend people take in order. And that's just going to set them up with a great foundation to their business. I think there's one or two marketing classes included yeah, in are. that collection. Mm -hmm. And then we have our top tier of membership, which is called the Master's Collection. And that mm -hmm. has everything all the classes um, 70, 70 plus 70, classes yeah. and um, <laughs> templates downloadable resources really everything you right. need to run a successful okay. business. And mm -hmm. also really great we know that um, you can take all these classes but sometimes because most of us are solopreneurs we're living we're doing our business alone in our home mm -hmm. um, where do you find the community to help support that so we have our big IPS mastermind Facebook group of 58,000 but then each of these levels have their own smaller private group where you can mm -hmm. come in and discourse course content and mm -hmm. really get a lot of um, helpful hints that you're not going to find in the big group okay. but our community is key okay well, sign me up i'm not even a photographer <laughs> <laughs> for those of you watching we'll be sure to have a link below uh, somewhere around here that you can easily access to click to get started with ips mastermind and learning some fantastic tips for marketing 
Uh, I want to go to the time aspect of it. Give me a second. I'm going to take a drink. Mm-hmm. Sorry. You we got our Starbucks here. One. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a game of chicken. Who's going to drink first? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll be that one. Uh, I want to go to the time. I think that's another thing uh, that photographers sometimes have trouble grasping uh, is the time of it. And you you two are both still shooting. You're still both maintaining wonderful photography studios yourselves. Yet you run the incredible IPS Mastermind Company. You're all over the place giving invaluable insights, speeches, and educational workshops. How do you manage to still give your clients the time and attention they deserve? And, and what advice would you give to photographers who seem to struggle with the, the time, like they, they're stressed to take on too much? Yeah, IPS definitely is an investment of time because you are sitting down with your clients and having those extra meetings. Mm-hmm. It does take mm-hmm. more time per client. Um, but what I found in my business is I don't have time not to do IPS. <laughs> because I earn so much more with this model, I'm able to take on far fewer clients and still come out way ahead. You know, I remember the days when I used to do like these back to back sessions in the park where I'd have 10 families on a Saturday and just be cramming in as many of these sessions as I could because they were priced so low. I had to do it that way in order to to make money. And that was exhausting. I wasn't seeing my kids. I wasn't able to really grow the business because I was in the weeds all the time. And now I can cut back to one or two clients a week so I can really give them my full attention. Mm -hmm. It's better for them and it's much better for my family. Right. And I find also that being able to not feel so stressed, like you have to get so much work in, Mm -hmm. really is just good across the board as far as um, life management. You know, my family life is better. My clients, my interactions with my clients are actually better because I'm not I'm not in a situation where um, I'm really having to I must make my numbers. I must make my numbers. My Mm -hmm. clients the way that it's set up is I I pretty much always make my numbers because of the way my pricing schedule is set up and that that results in a much more relaxed experience for me and my clients and they enjoy it much more. Mm-hmm. So the key sounds like quality over quantity. Absolutely. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so it will take care of itself if you adopt the IPS uh, philosophy it will kind of take care of itself in terms of time. Yeah. I'm really curious to ask this for you. Now, Rachel, you kind of got into it a little already, so we'll start with Dory. What was that moment Wait. like? <laughs> what was? <laughs> go for it. Take it away. Because both of you are at such an awesome level right now, but I want to go to the beginning with both of you. What was that moment like for you as a photographer when you were like just starting out? Kind of walk us through what that was like. Oh, I was clueless. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't have a clue of what I was doing. Um, I started ten years ago, which was. Oh goodness, the very, very um, onset of social media and all that kind of thing, Mm -hmm. online forums, and I didn't have a clue, but I'm very observant Mm -hmm. and I really just read as much as I could and learned as much as I could about not only my craft, um, because, you know, we have to worry about our camera skills as well in the process of all of this, getting good enough to sell good good images to clients, mm-hmm. but also just the business side of things. And really, I was reading on an online forum about sitting down with my clients, and I adopted it with the very next client. I didn't wait. I am a jump in type of girl and okay. see what happens later type of thing. And I'm like, okay, I can make more money. And my my income basically tripled as soon as I sat down with people Mm -hmm. and I was clueless I didn't know what I was doing I just learned along the way studied along the way and um, my background is in professional singing and performing and so I know how to move with the flow Mm because the show must go on and you always have to think quick on your feet Mm -hmm. and so that was one thing that I learned okay well after every IPS appointment I'd be like okay what worked this time and what can I do better and it's a constant, it's a constant state of bettering yourself, bettering your process, bettering the experience for your clients. And as you go through the process and you're in it a year or two, you really start to get a flow of what works best. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of been how, how it worked for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. And but other personalities that doesn't work for it all, they want everything set very first thing. They don't want any variables. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately we're dealing with humans and that just doesn't happen. So the flexibility is key. Okay. Uh, Rachel, again, you touched on it a little bit, but if you if you don't mind, again, that, that moment when you were just starting and kind of maybe yeah. that time when you decided, okay, I'm going to do this IPS yes. method. Yes, I remember my first sale and walking up to the apartment where my client lived and I was, mm. I was getting ready to sell for the very first time. 
I thought I was going to puke. I was so nervous. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And I'm, not, you know, I'm a performer as well. I have a classical okay. music background as well. So I'm used to being on stage. I'm used to being in front of people. But for some reason, this idea <laughs> of selling your own work yeah. is so nerve wracking because it really cuts deep to, you know, your self confidence issues. And what if they don't like the images? What if they don't buy anything? What if they laugh me out of their house? Right. So I went in there just full of fear. And as soon as I started showing those samples, um, I remember the whole energy in the room changed. They got so excited. And I remember the mom saying to the dad, like, oh, these canvases. Remember, we saw these in so-and-so's home last week. And you said you loved how that looked. Let's do those. So they they purchased four large canvases for their tiny little apartment. Um, I remember they had an 18-month-old daughter, four canvases of her at like a 20 by 30 size. And I just thought, Oh, wow, I did not see that coming. What are they going to do with these pieces when she grows, you know? But that's what they wanted. They were so excited. Um, and I obviously made so much more money that day than I had ever made on my artwork before. And it was very validating as an artist to know people will pay for my work. So then the confidence just kind of like came very quickly after that. And I, I felt good about what I was offering people. I think one thing that people need to remember is that we're selling a voluntary luxury item mm -hmm. people don't have to have professional images taken mm -hmm. we're not insurance we're not they're not we're not pounding on people's doors saying you must hire me mm -hmm. they're calling us and they're doing business with us because they want to do business with us okay, yeah. they've hired us for a reason mm -hmm. so nobody's there because they're forced to they know that at the end of the ips appointment they're going to make a purchase and they're there willingly because they hired you mm -hmm. um, and it, i think a lot of people lose track of that that they're they have the discretionary income to spend they if they if they knew the process ahead of time, they knew what they were walking into, and they want to make this purchase. Mm -hmm. um, and that mindset can be very reassuring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, you have built a massive community of professional photographers on Facebook and beyond. All, of course, while stressing that in-person relationship. This also seems to speak to the importance of networking for professional photographers. Is this true? Is networking an important part of being a professional photographer? And if so, how so? I think it definitely is. I think if you're just a lone wolf, you really limit yourself in terms of possibilities for growth. Um, I see networking in two different ways. One, I make a point of networking with other local photographers. And there are some people who are a little cagey and they don't want to meet with somebody local because they feel like it's their competition. But I don't have that sense. I want us to be a local community that supports each other and grows and helps each other. So I like to have you know, people like Dory who maybe specialize in something that I don't, because then I can send business their way, they can send business my way, we can help each other, even just talk shop and, you know, share samples and that kind of thing. Um, you can really, you know, grow a lot from those relationships. And the other way I use networking is just as a marketing effort, I'll just meet with people for coffee, um, I go to my chamber of commerce meetings, I'll meet with other business owners as much as I can and just get out of my own studio. Mm -hmm. And that's where I see real benefit in you know, meeting with people, you never know who your next great client is going to be, or maybe who's related to your next great client right. or friends yeah. with your next great client. Yeah. So I think just getting out of the house, getting out of okay. the studio is a really key part of, you know, marketing for me. Hmm. Absolutely. Now, do you recommend or how important is it uh, specifically for photographers to have a space with other professional photographers where they can openly discuss and share ideas and things like this. Do you believe that that is something of value as well, Dory, and, and, and how so? Oh, I think that that is a great, great resource to have for any person in business, especially those of us who are primarily working by ourselves. Um, you know, when my husband goes off to work every day, he has the opportunity to bounce ideas off of coworkers and talk about talk shop with a lot of other people in his office. I don't have that opportunity when I'm working in my office mm -hmm. um, on my business. And so having that community, even though it's online, is so great because I can I can say, you know, I had a client and this issue came up or I'm having an issue with this particular um, product that I'm trying to offer or I want to mm -hmm. do a special or something like that. And by having such a large community to bounce ideas off, it gives validation to what I'm doing. It makes me feel not so alone. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just a nice place to go to talk about the business that I love so much. Okay. And again, IPS Mastermind can be found on Facebook with well, over 58,000 members, right? And anybody yeah. is able to join that uh, group. 
Mm -hmm. You have to be a photographer to join that group. Mm -hmm. Um, Just have it indicated on your profile or that type of thing. It's not a place where we let everybody come in. It does have to Mm -hmm. be someone who has an interest in photography, someone who has a photography business, that Mm -hmm. type of thing. We do like to keep it limited to our industry because we want to keep it a safe environment for all our members. That's Mm -hmm. great. And it is an international community as well. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. So there you go. If you need a place to talk to some other photographers, IPS Mastermind Facebook group is a wonderful place to start. What do you think is one of the biggest challenges photographers face when offering albums uh, in their studio? Hmm. I can think of a couple. Go ahead. Um, I think one is knowing that you have a gallery good enough that all of your images are good enough to go in an album. Hmm. So you have some um, skill set issues that can be a struggle. Also, the price point of albums, I find people get really surprised at how much they need to sell albums for and believing that people will actually pay that much money. When you go through and run your business numbers and you're setting up your pricing and you realize that you need a starting point for an album is $1,200 US, that's a big investment. And a lot of us were like, whoa, I don't know if I would make that investment. So we project our money issues onto our clients and say no one would ever buy that. So it's not so much the products themselves because they're beautiful. It's a matter of getting over the price point and sometimes also the amount of images that need to go in an album. Okay. Yeah, I would agree. You would agree. Okay. Now, you two uh, are experts. You two are experts in business and you have prestigious backgrounds in photography. What is it that you look for when deciding on a potential business partner or, for example, a printing lab? That's a great question. For me, my perspective is that my lab is my partner. Mm -hmm. I want my lab to be part of my team. I want my lab to feel like family in some sense, that if Mm -hmm. I have a problem, I can call up. I know who I'm going to get on the phone. I know that they're for me, and I know that they are you know, wanting to see me succeed. So having that relationship is very important to me. Um, So I'll go out of my way to research different labs. We've actually flown out to the lab that we use most often to meet them in person and to tour their factory and just see how everything is made and have those conversations in person. That's how important it is to us. So I think taking the time to really get to know your lab is Mm -hmm. key and it pays off in huge ways over the years. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I find a lot of photographers view the the lab photographer relationship somewhat in a adversarial adversarial way Mm -hmm. that they don't want to see you succeed. Well, obviously your lab wants to see you succeed because when you succeed, they succeed. Mm -hmm. So um, I really, I want my lab to be on my team. I want them to be a part of what I'm doing of my success, because if I succeed, they make more money and it's good for everyone all around. So those personal connections are key. Um, Flying out and visiting your lab and your vendors is a great idea. If you can't do that, then going to one of the conferences that are held. um, I know in the US we have WPPI, we have imaging, Mm -hmm. and going and meeting those people and spending some time talking to those people. Mm -hmm. That's what they're there to do. They wanna make those connections. And sometimes even not just in the booth, but seeing if they can meet you for a coffee or that type of thing if their schedule allows because forming those relationships is very, very key. So you two would put uh, personal uh, attention and and this personal vibe over things like cost, over things like uh, quality. For you, it's that important. Well, quality Quality. is very important. Okay, maybe not that. (laughs) At at an equal level. (laughs) You know, we're not, I'm not... The, the first step is finding a lab that offers products that you really want to offer to your clients and yeah. meet those meet those quality standards mm-hmm. that you have. Mm-hmm. And then it comes into um, that personal relationship. Okay. And I'll be honest with you, with my chosen print lab, I've had issues before and I've had to go back and say, you know what, this wasn't done right. Mm-hmm. But because I have a relationship with them, they will mostly be more inclined to fix it mm-hmm. versus question me on it. Like they know that I'm not just trying to get a couple free extra prints or a couple, another mm-hmm. album for free. They know that I have a legitimate issue mm-hmm. and I need it fixed. But because we have that relationship, we can move from there versus them not knowing me from anyone and they're just seeing me as an account number on the screen. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a very important uh, part. And we, we all at Unphoto share that as well. Um, for those of you viewing, I, I highly recommend that you click uh, on Get to know Enphoto, one of the blog posts where I posted uh, some information about an interview that I had given. And the uh, interviewer had asked us, had asked me, what the uh, biggest accomplishment was for our company. 
And I told him I can't, I can't pick just one because it is when our customers are successful, when they are succeeding and we hear those stories from their phone calls or their emails, that is what is our success. Mm -hmm. uh, and getting those personal connections, like you say, I, I, I highly recommend going to those shows as well because, like you say, even if you're in the States, you might find somebody, an international partner that you did not know existed right. uh, as well. <clears throat> so those are all uh, wonderful things. Uh, no, coming back to my notes, sorry, I lost my, my place. That's all right. what, <laughs> what do you see? Speaking of uh, kind of, we were talking about challenges earlier of using albums. How about just in general, what do you see as the biggest challenge of the professional photographer of today? Oh, in general? Wow, that's a big one. Yeah, that is a big one. I mean, my mind is bouncing around to, to mm -hmm. different areas. I, I think one challenge is kind of fighting the public perception that mm -hmm. photography is now something that anybody can do. It's cheap, it's easy, it's quick. Um, it doesn't need to be a major investment. You know, um, Fighting that perception because there are so many photographers, because digital technology has come so far, mm -hmm. you know, kind of making that space for ourselves as artists in this world um, mm -hmm. is more of a challenge than ever before, yeah. I think. I think also um, defining like into genres, as a newborn photographer, the big um, perception that I deal with is the fact that I'm just a mom with a camera and I'm not running a real legitimate business. Mm -hmm. So I'm just, it's just a hobby that my husband supports by buying me fancy equipment, mm -hmm. which can be further from the truth. I mm -hmm. am a legitimate business owner that um, prices accordingly and provides a service to people. And there's so many others that don't. So the perception of it has changed a lot. So when people come to see me, it's my job to make sure that they see that extra value and the difference in why working with a professional is different than just working with someone who's doing it as a hobby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you believe, in your opinion, that there are more photographers today than there were 5, 10, 15 years ago? Is, is, it, a, is it a growing industry or is it kind of relatively s similar to where it was 5, 10, 15 years ago? I do think it's growing. I think um, that, you know, you see these photographers kind of come and go. Like the turnover rate to me in my sort of anecdotal evidence, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just being in the Facebook communities and that kind of thing, the turnover rate seems very high. So people will come in very excited. They'll set up shop. They'll do a cheap shoot and burn model and they'll very quickly burn out and kind of fall by the wayside. But then there's two or three more to take their place. Mm -hmm. So it does seem like there's a lot of activity kind of at the bottom end of the market with mm -hmm. sort of the new photographers coming in. What we always say though is if you're priced appropriately and you're branded appropriately where you're not fighting for those clients, you're kind of positioning your brand at a higher level and mm -hmm. looking for clients who are more willing to invest in artwork and see that as a long-term you know, investment. Mm -hmm. You don't struggle so much with that kind of crazy race to the bottom because you're not even so concerned with those photographers and what they're all doing. You can kind of focus on those um, higher end clients that you're looking to build a lifelong relationship with. So we don't struggle too much when we see those $10 photographers flooding the market because we know that it doesn't actually affect our clients um, or our businesses too much at all. Right. Okay. There's, yeah. There's a big difference in hiring someone like myself who's been in business for 10 years and has the experience behind it versus mm -hmm. someone who just picked up a camera two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And the price point's different. The experience is different. And most people know that. Okay. We've gone through a lot in this interview. I want to end with this question. What is one piece of advice you'd give to a photographer that you believe is important or is maybe something they haven't heard too often before? Hmm. One piece of advice. One piece of advice. I think my one piece of advice is never stop learning. Um, you will never know enough about your camera skills. You will never know enough about business. Don't become complacent in the fact that you think you have figured it all out. Um, keep learning. Keep striving to be better at what you do. Okay. That's one thing, Rachel. Think, I would say if you have a photography business, you need to treat your business like a business. <laughs> and that's where you're going to see that long-term success. You can't be making decisions with your emotions or, you know, how you feel about your pricing and things like that. You really do need to think as a business owner, be objective about what you're doing. And like Dory said, get help, never stop learning because none of us are born um, naturally great business people. We have to learn those skills. So obviously we believe highly in education and the people that we see that are out there killing it, 
they're the ones that have really invested in themselves and their education. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Now, I want to have just a final minute for you, Dory and Rachel, to tell our viewers how they can find you guys again, how they can get involved with IPS Mastermind. All right. Well, you can find us in a couple different places. You've mentioned our Facebook community a few times, and that's just you go to um, Facebook and you type in IPS Mastermind, and we have a few different resources. The one that you want is just the main big group of 58,000 members and growing. Mm -hmm. And then you can go to IPSMastermind.net to reach our educational resource. It's a monthly um, education site that we're adding new content to all the time. There's 70 courses now, um, but they're always growing and we love to see new members that are learning and growing their business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've also got an Instagram account. Oh yeah, Instagram, <laughs> ipsmastermind.com. Yeah. We do have a Twitter. We are not very active on Twitter, but it's, <laughs> if you're a Twitterer, is that what you would call it? A, uh, tweet, a tweeter? tweeter? A tweeter? No. I don't know. A Twitterer? I don't I'm, know. I'm not on there either. If, tweeter is a good If you tweet. If you tweet. Tweets, yeah. Um, yeah, that's just everywhere. It's just IPS Mastermind. So you can find us in Wonderful. those places. Mm -hmm. And um, we like to share things about behind the scenes and all sorts of things that are going on about the business. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So if you have not checked it out, be sure to check out IPS Mastermind, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter account as well. Also, be sure be sure to check back into N Photo Studio. We'll have a lot of great stuff coming. Thank you, Dory and Rachel. It's been a pleasure once again. They don't need an intro or an outro because they're Dory and Rachel from IPS Mastermind. <laughs> they're kind of a big deal, but they are Dory no, Howell no. and Rachel Bohr from IPS yeah. Mastermind. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Thank Gina. You, it's been Gina. great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.